Hey guys, welcome back to Dolan. And today, as per our Web Dev Wednesday initiative, we'll be looking into this discussion. Okay, we'll not say uh, like you know a topic or or a concept or something. We'll say discussion. Okay, so we'll be looking into this discussion on how to become a web developer in twenty twenty three. Okay, so a new new year is coming up. Uh, like it's almost like in a handful of days, we'll have a we'll hit twenty 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 three, right? So we'll look into few of the things or a roadmap to become a better web developer. Okay, not just a web developer. Okay, anybody can become a web developer. It's it's quite simple. But we'll look into a perfect roadmap on becoming a better web developer. Okay, the roadmap that we designed is based on my own experience and uh, like you know, uh, and of course the experience that we have in Dual Learn as well. So we combine all these things and I've put together this uh, amazing roadmap here so that you guys can have a look at it. So we'll go through each and every step. We we'll look into what are the things that you can do, what are the project, what type of projects you can build to get, or like you know, to master those skills that you already have, and then how to avoid getting into tutorial loops or tutorial hell, all these things. And also we'll talk about what to do next. Okay, so these things that a roadmap is fine, understand until you know what to do next as well, right? So let's say you get started, and then what? Those questions needs to be answered as well, right? So let's let's take a look at that. So first let's focus on the basics. Okay, so let's focus on the basics part here. Okay, I've divided this into like three columns, basic, intermediate and advanced. Okay, we'll just go through them one by one. So here's the basics part. So the first thing is the internet, of course. So you're a web developer, you'll be dealing with a lot of stuff on the online, on the web, right? Web is nothing but an internet. So you need to be able to understand what exactly is internet, how does data, I mean, how does data move around internet? and the way you can access to the access those data the way you can manipulate those data all these things uh, the example of concepts that you want to learn here is um, basically web and web development what exactly is web and, and stuff like that the www okay and then the url of course the very important the url the uh, like you know what is url what are the uh, like you know the anatomy of the url what are, what does it consist of what is host what is protocol what is top level domain? What is URL path? All these things, all right? And then DNS, because let's say you um, enter dualon.tech in Google, you'll get a website, that's cool. But the thing is, computer cannot understand dualon.tech. They understand only IP addresses. I mean, the network understands only IP addresses, right? So what DNS does is, DNS will convert whatever the alphabetical value that you type into a IP address manner. Okay, those things are, it's not like you have to develop those things. You just have to understand how it works. Okay, and yeah, so that will be like a basic thing that you want to know about internet internet to get started. All right, eventually learn most of the advanced concepts. Like, you know, for now, get started with these basics. All right, and then of course, you'll have HTML and CSS. In HTML, I would say, please look into things like, um, you know, accessibilities. Okay, those are, those things are, really important and also look into these things called semantic tags those are like html5 if you google html5 you will get it okay so please look into html5 and semantic tag those are really important and then css css oh, is this, this is the one of the uh, part right this is, this is the part where many people struggle so i've seen so many people you know uh, coming up to me and saying like uh, saying things like uh, i want to become perfect in css uh, i look into the other things later i spend like months learning and perfecting my css skills so tell me one thing what do you mean by perfect according to you if perfect means building stylish websites then you're in a wrong uh, like you know um you're, you're doing you're thinking it in a wrong way okay so the perfect styles or perfect animations, whatever you see on Google or in any other website is not on CSS is not the only uh, way to do it. Okay. And most of the time CSS is not involved in those animations or animations at all. Most of the time it's JavaScript is doing the animations behind the scenes. So what do you do? What do you do is learn a bit of CSS. If you know how to style, if you know how to change the color, if you know how to uh, like you know add some interactions like when you hover on a button if the color changes when you click on a button if the color changes if you're, if, you're, if you're able to do those things right and if you're able to design a layout it's very important okay learn flexbox and grid those things are really really important okay you need to know both 
both i'm telling you you need to know both and you need to know when to use them okay now just don't spend months learning grid and flex box okay it's very simple okay whenever you want row wise go with flex whenever you want row and column wise go with grid that's all okay that's the that's the one of the important thing and do not fall into do not think like i want to become perfect css developer there is no such thing as perfect css everybody <laughs> nobody is perfect in css even not even me i use like basically when you when you start progressing towards your career you won't be writing css a lot you'll be using libraries okay so don't spend much time on css just try to keep it minimal and next comes javascript javascript uh and also one more thing here the whole this thing that i've designed here i have kept it as flexible as possible so that doesn't matter doesn't mean if you want to learn python you can also follow this roadmap okay i'll tell you how so here why i'm including javascript is because this is a roadmap for full stack developers not just back end or front end it's for full stack both back end and front end so if you want to as a full stack developer when you're building front end applications javascript is necessary because your front end applications runs in browser and browser can under only understand javascript it cannot understand java it cannot understand python or something like that so you need javascript okay so here learn javascript learn the basics part okay don't worry about again don't worry of perfecting your javascript skills you will master the javascript as you go as you progress through your career all right so but the thing that you want to uh, like you know um, understand and then learn is do not skip the array methods okay the map filter all these things the esx this google uh, javascript esx you'll get so many uh, like you know you can get the mdn docs you can learn from that and do not uh, skip the network calls okay so, uh, try to learn promises try to learn async await try to learn this array methods try to learn how to work with objects how to manipulate it all these things these things are really really important okay if you skip it it's fine if you skip it but the thing is you'll find Uh, like you know you'll find hard time working with them later on or later on your career stage okay so do not skip them and the next thing that you want to learn is dom manipulation very important okay the you know there are these fancy libraries for front end right angular uh, react vue all these things are actually indirect not indirectly though behind the scenes all they are doing is doing dom manipulation that's what they're doing okay so you define whatever the uh, cool application that you're building in react or angular or whatever it is and then you define some logic inside it and then those libraries will bundle your logic and ultimately they're doing this dom manipulation so this is really important as a web developer for you to understand how the exact manipulation happens on the screen so you might have heard something called dynamic websites right where the there is a constant interactions Uh, on the website right so example dashboard or some form or anything where you click something happens where you test something happens so how does that something happening how does that happens in the behind the scene that that happens because of dom manipulation okay so here dom is something but document object model okay it's like a hierarchical structure of your whole website and manipulation is nothing but modifications so we modify so that something happens so this is very really important as a web developer you have to learn this okay so you you automatically learn this once you learn these three okay once you learn html css and javascript okay once you learn these three you will learn you, this will become easy for you okay because this domain application it will involve all the all, all these three things basically again after this there is something called mental model development so here's the thing so once you're done with domain application you have two options first option is that you can just straight away start with some react or node or django flask or whatever you want okay and then suffer later or you can spend a tiny bit of time okay a very short amount of time just mastering your skills how there are some really really small projects projects that you can build to master your skills and become a better developer and again we're not talking about just web developer here okay this is not a roadmap for web developers this is a roadmap for better web developers who just want to who want to be a rockstar developers okay <laughs> okay so the thing is when i say mental model development you have to develop this mental model who can visualize things okay for example let's say uh, hey build me this dashboard okay so you you see a design right you, let's say this is the design for the dashboard so we have a screen here this is the screen computer screen and then we have four boxes here right let's say we have four boxes and let's assume that all these boxes are same size okay all these boxes are same size let's say it's 12 pixel here 12 pixel here 
okay all these boxes are same size now if someone asks you to build this with normal html css you should not be like oh i'm i'm, I'm just getting started i'm a beginner i don't know how to do it i have to google things i have to so i have to watch youtube videos don't do that okay so when i say mental model development this is what you have to do just as for the first start breaking these things down okay first say okay so i have four boxes and all these boxes are 12 pixel each now i need four of them so what you can do okay so remember one thing before i told you flexbox and grid when you when you need only rows you use flexbox but here you need rows and columns right you need two columns and two rows so what you can do you can use grid okay you can define i need two columns okay and then i need two rows okay and then you can you can write a div here this is nothing but a div element okay that i'm going to can define a height and height as 12 pixel uh, width as 12 pixel and then you can basically add this inside the grid done easy peasy so look at the difference look at the difference when you when you think like uh, i'm just getting started can i even do it i'm a beginner i don't know css i'm not perfect in css look at that mental model but look at this mental model where you analyze things i even though if you're not confident that you cannot do it it's fine just analyze just start analyzing it you you, you don't know until unless you try right just analyze see after analyzing you were able to learn that this has rows and this has columns and since it's it's dealing with rows and columns you can use grid and you know how to write a div you know how to define height and width easy peasy that of course you know that and then you were able to build it so just by spending 5 minutes of your time analyzing the situation or analyzing the problem you were able to do it now you feel more confident when someone gives you a more complicated problem so that what makes you a better developer a better developer is not someone who has like uh, tens of certificates or you know knows fancy words who just keep talk talking in fancy words this is how a real developer is made okay you you don't become a real developer after be completing all the course you have you become a real developer when you change your mentality okay when you change your mental model okay so make sure you develop that model okay you make sure you develop that model okay so become a problem solver this is what your problem solver is not someone who just sits in lead code and then solves hundreds of problem per day of course they are also problem solver but it's not limited to them okay so if you are able to analyze things and then able to come up with some solution you are you are becoming you are, you are progressing okay that's the amazing progress mark it on your to do list okay so next comes look activities so you can you can consider this as projects as well so when you are done with this dom manipulation so when you are done with this mental model development as well right so when you, if you feel like oh yeah i can i can do these things right i know i know these things okay then start with these three projects these are really tiny tiny projects okay local storage local storage is something that your browser gives you okay uh, for every uh, project you can have you can avail up to 5 mb of storage so you can use that store a simple data store to do list okay build a to do list app where you store all the to do list in your local storage okay now this will give an amazing example of working with a real database okay navigation so try to like you know have like uh, one to two two three pages of html and when you click on its uh, button go to ht uh, page 2 when you click on another button go to page 3 come back do this okay and try to integrate that with local storage see if you can get some data on page 2 when you come to page 2 something like that okay try to you know combine them try to come up with creative way of projects okay and api calls and network calls remember the async and await that i told you in javascript so try to make some api calls okay there are many public apis available just search for um um json placeholder i think yeah json placeholder you get a public api try to interact with it okay just just make an api call get the data and then work with it and just just see how what are the just console log it that's enough okay and if you get an array of data you can just you know map it see what are the data is available you can do something like that some stuff like that okay so these are for the basics so once you do this you will be in a better stage you'll be in a stage where you can actually avail an internship okay so you'll be in this stage okay now what's the next step that you have to do okay next step is intermediate before that again make sure you have developed an amazing mental model okay it's fine i know you don't know react i don't know i know you don't know node js or no i don't i know you at this stage you don't know how to build a backend or something like that but this mental model will help you 
in the future as well so make sure that you are very good with mental model make sure that you see that you can analyze at least okay you can an analyze a problem and then at least come up with if it's fine if you don't come up with a solution but try to analyze the problem we learn a lot of things okay who knows you can get a to-do list as well to learn a few things okay in the future so make sure that you do it's fine if you say no for development but do not say no for to analyze a problem okay very important it's fine if you're not able to come up with a solution it's fine if you're not able to like solve that problem but do not say no to analyze it okay analyze it and then if you're not able to do it say no that's fine but do not say no to analyze it okay understand until you know at least what's what's inside that problem okay next comes intermediate so here you can either skip these uh here if you are not interested in front end development if you want to just go to the back end okay so these here is for front end okay so front end is nothing but whatever you see on the screen okay right now in the browser so react uh, i'm i'm personally saying react why because you can of course you can go with angular view whatever you want but the thing is react has a better community okay and uh, since it's matured uh, throughout the years a lot of people are using it and then the opportunities you get in react are high so start with react okay get a better job okay get a better pay and then you can move to some other libraries okay later on okay and then react query so this is very really important okay so initially we used to use something called redux you can use it now no problem but the thing is it's very um, complicated okay because you have to do a lot of boilerplate setup and then it's not used for every single use case there are many people just use it but even though they don't need it they start using and tell you to like hey use redux and then you have to spend your time writing all those uh, reducers actions all those boilerplate a lot so react query is an amazing uh, network call library okay it's not only network it doesn't make it doesn't only simplifies the network calls for you it also helps you in caching as well okay it has a lot of features try to work with react query and then routing so try to work with react router as well see how to route see how to use url to get the data to send the data to move the data all these things okay and then react dev tools very important okay learn how to use react dev tools okay because often times you have to debug a react component and then don't use console logs for every single debugging okay try to use react dev tools react dev tools will give will give you an amazing way to visualize everything okay next comes css pre processors very important let's say uh, what is this css pre processor okay here's the thing we have a lot of browsers don't we we have chrome we have firefox brave safari opera mini all these things right and you cannot tell your user to exactly use this browser you can say like hey use only chrome or else you can't run my application they will just let go of your application they won't use it right so you need to be able to support your application on all these other browsers so what css preprocessor does is you write css in one file and then you run through the preprocessor library so what it will do is it will go through your css okay it will read it will read all the css line by line and then what happens is in two different let's say in firefox some css property might not work so it, it or it might have some other syntax to to like declare that property so css preprocessor will do that for you so it will make sure that whatever the css code you write in that file is actually supported by all the browsers okay so you'll get a cross browser we call this as cross browser support you'll be able to get them the popular preprocessor is uh, you might have heard something called sas sass that's one of the, that's one, i mean many people will be using it so you should it's better to know that it's not like you have to know it inside and out just work with it once okay just install it just try to build a simple portfolio or something enough you'll be good with it okay and ui libraries so this is very important like such as stylebind or chakra ui because in many companies or in many uh, startups or wherever you get in right you will often see either they'll be using sas okay and i'm i'm going to tell you that uh, do not use sas a lot of times unless until it's, it's a small project don't go with sas for major projects and if it's a very big project people will be using something like tailwind or chakra or material ui something like that so what these will do is these will give you a ready made components okay like if you want a button you just import a button you won't style it from scratch you'll get a styled button you can customize it later okay those are ui libraries 
Okay, try to work with them as well because you'll be working this a lot in your career. You won't be writing actual CSS unless and until it is required. Okay, and security basics, just a bit. Okay, like a uh, uh, cross scripting attack, or or try to uh, like you know um, do not share your keys in API calls. All these basic security steps. Okay, and next comes backend. Here uh, you can see I didn't I, I haven't included anything like uh, Node.js or Python or something like that. It's kind of it's it's kind of like a standard. Okay, so REST API. Start with REST API. I know you can go with some other way of uh, you know building backend, but start with REST API because it's very simple. Okay, so start with REST API. Try to work with uh, requests like get, post, put, and delete. Uh, it's very important you work with these type of APIs. Okay, and then try to work with databases such as NoSQL, SQL, and everything. Okay, so you can start with Node.js since you are since you are already familiar with JavaScript here. You can start with Node.js. It will be really uh, like you know you don't have to spend another some more time learning a language. But if you are like a Python based background or a Java based guy uh, or a Java based person, you can start with uh, like you know for Java you will have Spring Boot. You can start with that. For Python you will have like a Flask or Django. You can start with that. Okay, and. Um, these uh, rest api is nothing but http calls okay network calls so you can have you will definitely in any languages you'll have for http module you'll be using that okay in databases you can work with sql and no sql no sql such as mongodb okay you'll be working with document uh, based doc, uh, database as well and then bytes and buffers so what is this bytes and buffers so this is the way of a data okay for example um, the best example is blockchain so when you interact with smart contracts on blockchain right some of the data type that blockchain or smart contract supports will not be supported by your language uh, the best example is uh, one of the what happens is in i use node.js personally on the backend side and when i when i interact with contracts a uh, certain amount certain type of data types won't be supported by the node.js that the uh, smart contract supports so the smart contract will send the data and then I will receive the data in my Node.js as either bytes or buffer. So either in two ways. So what I have to do is I have to parse them to get it in the format that I want. So these are like a, a bare, like raw data. Okay, they, they're not in any format. For example, let's say you, there's the ocean has a lot of water, right? So if you pick it up in your hand, the water will become in the shape of your hand. If you pick it up in your glass, the water will get the shape of your glass. That's what bytes and buffer is. So they are raw data. They don't have any data structure or something. You have to convert them like however you want. Okay. So make sure you work with them. It's really important, guys. This this thing is really important. Try to work with them because let's say you are uh, building application for IoT or something like that, and you're working with some sensors. So you, these things might come in handy. Okay. All right. Here we come. Ha activities. So handling image uploads, it's very important. Of course, you'll have image uploads for literally many applications, right? So knowing how to work with image upload is really important. Here, we'll actually learn quite a few things because the way you get images, sometimes you might get in buffer format as well. Yeah, the image might come in buffer or bytes as well. So you might learn how to work with it. Deployments, try to deploy your front end and back end applications. Okay, we can start with either, either Heroku or for back end. Oh, oh, wait, Heroku is not free anymore. So, for back end, you can go with Railway app. I think Railway.app might support it. Okay, or else you can go with uh, AWS. Okay, middlewares, try to work with middlewares in your REST API. Okay, auth and tokens, um, try to work with authorization, authentication authorizations as well. Okay, try to add Google authentication, try to add a Facebook authentication, try to do like email password sign up, try to generate a JWT token. Okay, these are really important. Email services, try to build uh, like, you know, uh, an email service. Okay, you can just either write and build an API or build a front end as well for it. Okay, so where you select from and to and then a body and then when you click on send, you send an email for them. You can use, if you're working, uh, in, you can use AWS SCS for that. Okay, AWS wait aws ses okay you can use this uh, or else you can if you're if you're a node.js based back uh, developer you can go with node mailer as well 
Okay, so try to work these things because these things are common in any application that you build because of course you'll have authentication for any application that you build and uh, middleware is really important when you have authentication in your APIs and then deployments, You know, of course you'll have deployments for all the application. Okay, no matter if you are in a company, in an internship or a full-time employee or if you have your own startup, you'll have deployments, you'll have image uploads, you'll have email service. These things are common in every application so you need to know how to build them okay do not wait until you get an internship and then learn these things since these things are common try to learn it okay you have no idea how much your team will appreciate you for that okay try to learn them you will actually feel like when when your team says like hey uh, can you uh, build an api to uh, upload an image be like of course just give me like an half a day or like 30 to one or one, two, like two hours, it will be done. And then get it done as soon as possible and your team will appreciate you a lot. Okay, right. So these are like an intermediate part. It's quite simple, right? No complication, just quite simple, straightforward. Okay, here comes the advanced part. Okay, let's, let's go look at the advanced part. This is one of the thing, right? TypeScript. So this is for JavaScript based people. Okay. So if you are using Python or something in the backend, uh, you can skip this TypeScript, but for front end is really important. You, you have to know TypeScript uh, because as you progress, you won't use JavaScript a lot because JavaScript is loosely typed and then you need TypeScript to make sure that your application is type secure. Okay. And then uh, it's actually same as JavaScript. Okay. You'll just be defining what are the types of it okay whether it's a string or a number or your whole array like something like that okay next js uh, it's for front end okay it's like a react framework okay it's not a library it's a framework it gives you a lot of things uh, to build a production grade applications okay and next js this is for back end okay this is the node js back end okay if you are working with python or something you can skip it if you are, if you are a node js based developer who is working as on the back end as well you can use nest.js okay it's really it's really good uh, you know a backend web server to build production applications okay when if you're a company uh, if you're working for a company where you're working if you if you have multiple people on the team okay let's say you have like five to ten people on the team or more nest.js is amazing okay it lets you build and reuse a lot of modules and stuffs inside the whole application sdks and cli tools try to build at least one sdk or one cli tools you will learn a lot Okay, you learn how to like, you know, read an input from the keyboard, how to process it, all these things. And along with it, try to work with files as well. Try to like create a file, delete a file, update a file. Okay, and try to write test cases as well for that. Okay, and next comes GraphQL. So GraphQL is one of the amazing thing. Okay, so it was actually built to reduce or to eliminate some of the drawbacks of REST API. So if you don't know how to build or work with REST API, you won't understand GraphQL like a lot okay you you will understand you will work with it but you won't be able to understand like what exactly it is what exactly is it solving so try to work with the api first and then come back to graphql you will appreciate the uh, like you know amount of effort first i mean you will appreciate the existence of graphql that's what i'm trying to say okay and redis redis is for caching so try to this is not like required for every single uh, use cases but just 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 give it a glance okay just say oh okay it is okay you do this you install it this is how you work with it that's enough don't spend a lot of time looking into it unless it is it's required just have a glance so that you will know what it does okay sometimes let's say you are in a, a brainstorm meeting and you're discussing with your team about how to build this amazing feature and then redis might be applicable over there and since you already know a little bit of Redis, you'll be able to propose this idea. Hey, uh, I've looked into this Redis thing. It, it seems like we can use this. So let's try to at least let's give it a try. You can say something like that. Okay, so just give it a glance. Serverless, uh, one of the thing that serverless is really amazing. Okay, so it's like basically your backend, but it's not like there's no server. Okay, there's a server, but the thing is you, need, you don't need to run it uh, like you know constantly. You don't need to have your servers running 24 into 7. You just write some function you just write some logic and you just keep it and if there is a request for that logic the uh, server will run okay the function will run or else it will just stay off it will just, just terminate itself so that you don't have you, you will pay only when you use it okay you won't be paying even when it's idle okay so again this is also not required in most of the case but just have a look at it just just you know just spend your weekends okay just spend like one to two hours in your weekend just trying to like uh, play play around with it 
okay so if there is a requirement again in your company or when you are working within if the project you might propose this as well because there might be some background task right that you might need so let's say um um you need to record uh yeah let's say you need to send an email okay for every user who signs up and but you don't want to run that in your own backend you have to keep it separate okay in that case you can use serverless in my case how i do is uh, one of the use case that i use serverless was that uh, we were indexing this data on blockchain okay in on polygon so whatever the transaction happens on polygon we were uh, basically getting it okay parsing it and then if it is nft based transaction we send out an email that's what we are doing and of course one thing here is i can't keep uh, like a, i can't keep this module in my own application server okay because we had an application as well who, who actually wanted this whole uh, event and i can't keep that in my uh, application server because a lot of people will be working with polygon blockchain for every single second we'll keep, we'll keep getting thousands of transactions i can't keep indexing every single one with my application server or my application will slow down that's the reason we use serverless so we we just uh, deployed a function for that what function will do is that we keep on like you know getting the data from blockchain and it will keep on informing our application independently so there won't be any dependency and my application server will only handle my application data it won't handle we won't touch this data so similarly like you can use as the background task as well okay so something like that just have it just give it a glance in your weekends ci cd very important okay ci cd is called continuous integration continuous delivery uh, one of the devops concept so let's say you build an application you want to deploy it to the cloud okay you go there you deploy everything manually and then people start using it you get a lot of bugs people start reporting reports people will start reporting a little bit of bugs in your application you'll fix it and then you have to go there manually deploy it again again you get some bugs or let's say you want to add some more features or change the color or something you want to update it again go manually deploy it so to reduce this manual process you'll be using cicd okay this will automate the deployment the best example is you push everything to github so cis you set up a pipeline you can use like github actions or travis ci or circle ci any of these tools or jenkins okay you might have heard about jenkins so what this will do is this will keep an eye on your github uh, github account github account when you push an update you know, these cicd tools will get those updates it will deploy wherever you specify it you have to specify the destination it will deploy it over there okay that's what it is and you can also run test cases here okay so if you have test cases you can specify like hey run these test cases and if everything passes only then deploy okay so it will run all the test cases if it everything if everything passes only then it will be deployed or else it will be it will fail and it will roll back okay so it's very important if you know see if you know how i mean you should know how to dip, how to use cicd okay it's very very important let's put a star over there it's exactly not a star but it will do and then proxies load balancer so these actually come in handy i mean you don't have to do this from scratch most of the time okay unless it is it's required so proxies are something like the way you define i mean proxies are something where uh, it defines how the data moves so let's say you have a server here and then you have a server here so if you move you if you want to redirect the redirect the traffic to this server so proxy you have to define a proxy because you can't just ping a server okay you can't just go and knock a server okay you can say hey dude what you doing you can't do that okay you need to be able to handle the traffic really well okay because everything is secured everything is locked down okay everything will be locked up initially you have to open up a simple port and then you have to define proxy so that they can actually enter into that port and they are actually coming from a legitimate source so there are two types uh, proxy i mean forward proxy and reverse proxy so try to learn about them it's not required but just keep an eye on this go this just you know read some blogs or something that's enough okay and load balancer again load balancer uh, as the name says let's say you have like a two server load balancer will sit in front of them and people uh, let's say there are millions of people requesting for your server so they will hit the load balancer load balancer will, will distribute the request appropriately so that each of these server won't get overloaded and they won't crash okay that's what load balancer does again you don't need this most of the time unless and until it's required okay and docker so um docker is something that you really want to know because it it will save you it will save you a lot of times okay when you are when you are deploying 
or let's say you're setting up this uh, let's say there are some uh, for example redis right redis right redis doesn't work well in windows okay it's very hard to get it working in windows so what you can do is you can run a docker container you can run a linux based docker container inside that you can install redis and then you can actually use that container in your windows system okay this can be done okay so docker is really i, I won't complicate by explaining docker here but look into docker only when you are done with all of these things so when you're done with this when you're done with this and then this is fine i mean you can start with docker after these two it's fine but do not start with docker unless and until you at least you have deployed one application okay unless and until you deployed at least one application do not go with docker it's, it, it, it will just get confused a lot and then we have microservices again it's not like you need it but just try to look into it microservices is something like dividing into small 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 services okay let's say you have a very huge project you divide them into small services and then try to work with one another that's what microservices is okay so this is like a a, a fine-tuned roadmap for you okay if you have any doubts you can ping me in the comments or in the discord as well okay but this is like a fine-tuned version of uh roadmap for you for becoming a better web developer on 2023 it's not like a good web developer a better one okay here the main thing here the main thing that it's not all these things that lets you get succeeded in web developer as a web developer the only thing that get, makes you succeed in web developer is this mental model that I, I was talking about because no matter if you know all these things in the list here if you have a pretty weak mental model you won't be able to succeed in that you will be uh let's say you get into a job you get like a base minimum a bare minimum payment a salary over there and you'll be in that stage you won't progress at all okay so try to work on your mental model first and then start progressing do not skip anything in the intermediate and basics in advanced maybe you can skip some things it's fine but do not skip anything in intermediate and basics really it's really really important okay and next thing is what's next right what to do like see this is another thing right um one of the thing about this whole thing is you need to like this is one of the thing that we actually implement in dual learn as well okay in dual learn syllabus as well you can if you can go and check it out dual learn syllabus that's what we do as well over there it's not like uh, we just teach you everything that you don't need or something it's that's what it is dual learn is all about getting you into tech and then make sure you succeed in there it's not just about teaching you like how to like hey this is web development this is how you build web server it's not something like that okay so if you can see you'll be building a lot of projects as well um uh, accessible accessible html co uh, contact form accessible i told you right accessibility that one dom manipulation crud operation crud is nothing but like all these uh, create read update and delete get post uh, put and delete okay api documentation how to document your apis caption project for like you know you'll be building a capstone block uh, backend as well and then landing page with HTML CSS, how to build a beautiful HTML CSS landing page. You know, you'll be learning all these things, okay? Like you have fundamentals here where you have like DNS, static, anatomy of the URL, web protocols, do's and don'ts, like, you know, HTML, CSS, semantic tags, as I was talking, right? Semantic tags, all these things, accessibility, like we'll be like, that's what we, the whole point of dual learn is to make sure that you succeed. Okay, so do check it out. The link will be in description. I won't just go over the entire syllabus here because I want to I want to get into one more section here, like what to do next. So let's say you were able to uh, learn all these things. Okay, so you are a good developer now. You have work with multiple projects. You have a good experience now. You're ready for the next step, right? You are ready to tackle the next step. So what to do next? What to do, what to do next? The next thing that you want to do is I mean, you can do, not want to do, you can do as few things. So you can either go with WebAssembly. So WebAssembly is something that is uh, getting a lot of attention right now. I mean, nowadays, it's actually built with Rust. So you can actually run binaries in browser. So when I say binaries, binaries can only be, uh, can only be executed in operating systems, right? So you can actually run that binary in the browser. So if this, with this you can actually run games inside the browser okay you can run many things okay for example figma if you guys know figma right uh if i i can open up figma in my browser right i can do whatever i want in figma in my browser and let me tell you one thing figma is built with c plus plus and that is being used inside the browser and that is possible because of WebAssembly. 
okay we call this as vasm w a s m okay that is possible because of web assembly okay so you can look into web assembly it's really interesting okay you'll be working with rust over there and you can learn machine you can do machine learning guys it's not like you have to learn machine learning and everything uh, you can collaborate with machine learning people you can interact integrate and interact with ml models okay so basically uh, machine learning models will be built you'll be integrating that in your application you'll be defining how the data should flow what what you do with the output and everything same goes with data science uh, you'll be like you can you can like you know set up pipelines for that like you can know uh, let's say data comes in from certain sources you can get all the sources you can set up kafka you can like you know basically you can def design a whole data pipeline with your back end and front end skills okay blockchain so you can build decentralized applications okay with smart contracts you can do so, so many things with blockchain as well with your web development skills actually with web development skills you are like you know 80% blockchain developer okay so if if you are a really good web developer you are also 80% blockchain developer so in, in, in the next 20% is about learning protocols learning uh, smart contract development learning how things work in blockchain blockchain and everything okay those things are the, the remaining 20% okay and cloud you can also go with cloud as well uh, where you can uh, um, you know go with cloud architect position where you can define where you can actually learn about how to architect an application uh, the best example is think about hotstar right the million people were watching live and hotstar didn't crash or something so that's one of the thing cloud architect does okay so you can define how many people let's say how to how does your application scale how does your application behave in all these things okay devops devops is something uh, like you know basically many developers would know this um, devops is something that helps you with development and operations so operation is where you deploy your application and monitor it okay that's what operations comes in develop and develop develop the application remember the ci cd that i told you it's part of the devops as well so where you build the application you test it you automate the deployment with ci cd once it is deployed you start monitoring it okay all these things will be in devops okay you will also define the coding styles the es linting all these things as well okay so that's what devops is okay so you can do all these things once you're good with web developer okay it's not like web development is the only uh, stage and only one way it's not like that once you're a good web developer or a better web developer you can go with multiple uh, like you know path as well it all depends on interest and mental model guys do not do not do not decide or come to a conclusion when someone says hey you can do that don't don't do it unless and until you try it just spend a week trying it if you like it continue it or else just stop it okay worst comes to worst you'll just lose like you know what a week of time that's all nothing nothing else right so next time if someone gives, st starts telling you then you can say that i've tried it okay and i don't want to do it okay i don't want your opinion as well you can be straightforward because i see a lot of people saying that i want to do this i want to do that but some people said that i'm not good with it and some people said that it doesn't that doesn't suit me or something so ask yourself this one question who are those people uh, you know who are those people to tell you like what suits you and what is not i mean you are the one who can decide that right so just spend at least one week of time trying to work with it i'm telling one week is because uh, why I'm, I'm why am i saying one week is because uh, let's say the for the first two days you'll be excited so you'll be able to do it and the next 3 4 5 6 7 okay, all these four days or five days you will not be excited as compared to the first two days so you'll be able to decide genuinely whether whether you are interested or not if you are interested you will enjoy all these seven days in a week if you're not interested you will just enjoy for first two days and then the next few days would be like uh, I, I don't want to do it i guess i'm not interested i, I don't I, I don't find this uh, you know interesting or something so you will come to a conclusion and this conclusion is actually valid because you tried it and then you came to a conclusion okay so this this is how you have to do it so yeah so as i was saying make sure you guys would do this properly like this okay so let me just zoom out so this is how the whole one year would look like for you if you follow this whole thing okay and this doesn't need a whole one year you can just spend like three months you can learn all these things and then you can start working okay so again if you have any doubts you can use the comment section you can drop a message in the comment or i would say 
come join our discord group and then try to interact with us over there we'll be available 24 i mean not 24 into 7 but most of the time throughout the week okay we'll be available full time over there throughout the week you can interact with us anytime you want okay with that said thank you so much guys thank you so much for watching we'll see you again bye bye take care